Hi Year 11s, welcome to the second YouTube clip. I know I said I was going to do stopping distance with you but um, it was a lot more difficult than I thought and I think it will be better to teach that one when I'm back. So today we're going to look at error in measurement. When we're measuring different objects we often make errors and usually they're to do with, usually they're human errors in that the person measuring it makes a mistake. Often that's to do with rounding the measurement. So if I was measuring a table and it was um, 1 meter 45 centimeters, I might round that to 1.5 meters. That's an error in my measurement and that's what we're looking at today. Key term you need to know is absolute error. So the red term here. Um, the absolute error of a measurement is the greatest possible error or the furthest by which we can be wrong. And it is equal to half the smallest unit marked. This will make more sense in the next slide. Sorry. Okay, first example here. So this diagram is a section of someone's measuring tape. And we can see here that the smallest unit is in millimetres. What is the smallest unit marked? So we've got centimetres marked here, but in between that we have our millimetres. So our smallest unit marked millimetres. Okay, how would you record measurements A and B and Y? The first one here we've got A, it is pointing at 40 millimetres. Um, now if this was a little bit to the right or left but still close enough I would still say that it was 40 millimetres because I'd be rounding up or rounding down. When I'm looking at this one at B it's 51, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, so 56 millimetres. So like I said A is 40 millimetres and B is 56 millimetres. Why? They're the smallest units we have. If we had smaller units within here we could be more accurate but at this point in time that's the, the smallest unit we have. Last question, what is the absolute error of measurement A? So like I said before, if this A, if this arrow was a little bit down, so in between 39 and 40 millimetres, I would be rounding up. And if it was between 40.5 um, millimetres, then I'll be rounding down or just below 40.5 millimetres. So the absolute error of measurement A, remember it's half, plus or minus half the smallest unit. So we're going to go from 39.5 millimetres to 40.5 millimetres. Anywhere within that range I would be uh, rounding to 40 millimetres. Okay, on to the next slide. What I want you to do here is I actually want you to have a go at these questions first. I want you to pause the video, have a go, and then I'll put the answers up in a minute. Just to remind you you're looking at the smallest unit. So in this first one here, we can see it's 40 centimetres. So the smallest unit is one centimetre. Then, so the absolute error is plus or minus half a centimetre because it's half the smallest unit. This was our measurement. So it's either 39.5 or 40.5 centimetres. So what I had to do to that 40 was I had to subtract 0 0.5 and I had to add 0 0.5. So I want you to have a go with three, these uh, four. Be careful, this one here says to the nearest kilogram, whereas this one here is to the nearest 10 kilograms. So the smallest unit given in this one is 10 kilograms. So the absolute error will be 5 kilograms. So pause it now, have a go, and I will show you the solutions in a minute. Okay, you should have had a go now. Uh, here's the solutions. So you can pause again uh, to mark. As you can see here, like I said before, this was the smallest unit mentioned was 10 kilograms. So it was plus or minus 5 kilograms. So you either have to, you had to add and subtract 5 kilograms to those to 600 kilograms for that one. Okay, let's have a look at our next slide. This is a year 12 topic, but it is relevant um, to year 11, and it is good to see now. It's one that a lot of people struggle with. And that's percentage error. Obviously when you're measuring, if you're measuring a really small, ob or if you're measuring in a small amount of units, if I'm measuring in millimetres, my mistake isn't going to be too significant. 
But if I was measuring in metres and I made an error in my measurement, that would be quite a significant error. So percentage error allows us to compare different errors in measurement. So percentage error, uh, here's the formula, is the absolute error, so um, plus or minus half the measurement, divided by the measurement itself times by 100. Let's have a quick look at the steps. So when you're, when you're given a measurement and you're asked for the percentage error, first thing you need to do is state the smallest unit on your, in your measurement, then find the absolute error. Once you've done that, you can now substitute in the absolute error and your measurement into the formula and calculate to solve. Let's have a look at an example. So the measured length of Sydney Harbour Bridge is 503 metres. And the nearest length of a basketball court is 26 metres. Again, if I measured this one wrong by half a metre, that's it's not a big error because I'm looking at 500 metres. But here on a basketball court, half a metre is quite significant because it's a lot smaller. So what we need to do here is find the percentage error of each uh, measurement above, correct to three decimal places. And from there we can see well, which measurement uh, would be more accurate. Okay, so I've worked through both of these questions now. So the smallest unit for the Sydney Harbour Bridge is one metre. That's what's stated in the question. So the absolute error is plus or minus half a metre. So using our formula from before, we put 0 0.5 over 503 times 100. If you plug that into your calculator, you get 0.9940%. Rounding that to three decimal places, which is what the question has asked us to do, we get 0.994%. Um, if I'm looking at the basketball court, the smallest unit again is uh, metres. So the absolute error is plus or minus half a metre. Putting that into my formula, that's 0 0.5 over 26 times 100, which gives me 1.92307%. Uh, and rounding that to three decimal places, 1.923%. Now, we can see that even though we have the same smallest unit, when we're measuring here, we'd only make just under 1% error, whereas here we're making nearly a 2% error. So therefore, I would say that the Sydney Harbour Bridge, oops, sorry, the Sydney Harbour Bridge measurement has a smaller percentage error, so therefore it is more correct or accurate. When you're writing these, make sure that you write complete sentences, and this is the answer that I'd be expecting for question B. That concludes today's lesson. In class on Wednesday, you should be doing exercise 602, questions 1, 2, 3, 5 and 7. There will be rewards for those who complete all the set work for this week and there will be detentions for those who don't. So spread the word if you know some people aren't watching these videos. I hope you have a good day tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me. My email is afelberg at kws.nsw.edu.au. I am checking regularly, so you're welcome to contact me that way. See ya.